Next, we move on to the ad hoc here, board, ad hoc meeting committee, Mr. Moran. Good morning, Mr. Executive, County Board yeah. members, members of the public. Uh, we had an airport ad hoc meeting this past month, a productive meeting uh, with updates from the Farm Bureau, IDOT, and our lobbyists. Uh, the Farm Bureau gave a report on uh, their concerns and issues that they've, uh, IDOT has started to address. Uh, and uh, so far, they've had a positive result from their meeting with IDOT, and we're looking forward to uh, more interaction between those two agencies. Uh, IDOT, Susan Shea gave an update on the status and the status report on the South Suburban Airport, uh, discussed with property acquisition status, timeline, status of each of the FAA sections requiring approval. Uh, they've been approached by several financial houses that are interested in financing and construction, and they'll be hosting a South Suburban Airport Industry Forum on the 23rd of September at the Tinley Park Convention Center in Harlem and Interstate 80. Uh, they, they hope to hold this meeting at Governor State University in Will County, uh, but the scope and the size of the meeting conflicted with the use by students that are now in session. Uh, so this meeting will be similar to the one that was held in Rosemont uh, for the Ilian Expressway, if you remember that one. Uh, um, IDOT Stephen Schilke was here also. He gave a report on the status of the Ileana. They're waiting. IDOT is waiting on a biological report from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife on long-eared bats and bullnose bull mussels. They expect this will come before the end of the year, but they have no control in the timeline. They don't expect it to be a significant issue for the project. Uh, and Julie Curry gave an explanation on proposed legislation that came up in the, in the uh, uh, spring session on the Ileana uh, that had to do with uh, the bonding and priorities for transportation projects and that. It's expected to come back up in the veto session in November. Well, and if it doesn't, something doesn't happen with it there, they expect something will come up in the spring session in January if necessary. Uh, it has to do with um, the ability for IDOT to, or the, the third party uh, public private partnership to get low interest loans to the federal government. Um, and there will be another meeting of the Air Hoc, Ad Hoc Committee on the October 2nd at 8.30 a.m. Uh, where we'll, we'll have a report from Rhonda on the, uh, what happens when the state asks for tax exemption on <coughs> properties that have been purchased in the airport footprint. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Any comments, any questions, Mr. Um, thank you, Tony Executive. What I did want to put out there is um, I've attended many of these sessions over the course of the last 20 some years that have been put on by IDOT and the um, and the expected use and everything and claimants and everything and those numbers have continued to be wrong and if you heard recently the Chicago Tribune the summer had put out a report where the FAA had actually fudged some of the numbers for the O'Hare expansion so the O'Hare expansion could, would go through so I, I think we have to really be very conservative as a county when we look at this you look at the legislation in Senate Bill 20, how it gives um, anybody who might lease land within the airport footprint, which reminds you it's 20,000 acres between villages of Beecher Creek, Piatone, and Monique. Um, O'Hare at full expansion, we have around 7,000 acres. And all their property, if they lease in that, then what happens is there's no taxes collected for us. So, how are we as a county going to, going to look at this situation and make it a benefit for us if um, we lose tax dollars constantly, local taxing bodies lose it out in my district, and what, that, what happens there is while the taxing bodies themselves maybe don't, don't lose it, the dollars, the local residents are still paying because they still levy at that same amount of money. So these are things that I think we really need to look into before we just keep jumping on the bandwagon and say, yeah, an airport's a great idea. Let's let's go ahead and take it. Remember, land purchases began in 2002, and it's currently 2014. We still don't have an airport of IDOT, and um, our various governors who supported it, who um, had all been indicted in certain times, and um, now we have our current governor who is under federal investigation. So this is something we need to be careful with. Um, 
of course, I do support always the creation of jobs, but jobs created for the wrong thing for certain special interests is something we need to be aware of. And um, I hope to continue this conversation. And I look for answers. <coughs> How are we going to help the school districts out highway, like Beecher School District, that's losing $92,000 with the sale of both field and Bruce property, and Piatone School District, which is losing $66,000 with the sale of those properties. That's a big concern for my constituents, and especially in Beecher, um, when you go door to door, that's all they ever talk about is their high property taxes, which of course mo mostly is their school property taxes. So it's something we need to think about. It isn't something we can just say, ah, oh, it's a great idea, and if they build it, you know, maybe the airlines will come, but the thing is, what happens if we don't? And I don't think Will County has a plan for that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to first let me start my comments by saying I've been a supporter of the airport, the third airport. Not always all aspects of the third airport, but certainly the concept of a third airport being in most houses. But I do have other concerns that I feel aren't addressed uh, by the state and I got. And as we go forward, I got that's the one to to report on us the progress of our going through the bureaucracies or the progress of getting approvals from the FAA, the purchases of, 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 of property uh, uh, for an auto uh, air, airport. Uh, but when you ask about questions about impacts on the low county, and I'm talking about, I'm not even talking about quality of life impacts, I'm talking about financial impacts infrastructure impact and how these are going to be addressed. Potential losses of revenue. Uh, there's no answers. You know, it's always coming down the line. So so I, I do have concerns that that we're really not getting Will County's concerns addressed. We're just concerning uh, addressing the concerns of building an airport. So I think we should continue to press IDOT for some real answers and solutions uh, on how we're going to be uh, uh, economically impact, how our infrastructure are going to be, be impacted, how they're going to be addressed, uh, where are the participation by a private sector partner in some of these impacts. So, you know, we should never forget that we represent Will County. We don't represent the state of Illinois, and we don't necessarily represent airport interests. We represent the interests both county residents, all of those county uh, uh, citizens. So let's keep that in mind and let's keep moving in that, in that direction. Thank you. Mr. Brook. Mr. Executive, well, one of the reasons why I have been an advocate of keeping the Ad Hoc Airport Committee on our agenda is to keep them engaged with the Illinois Department on Transportation. The issues that are raised here are very important issues. And they're very important to not only the eastern part of Will County, but all of Will County. And we do want those answers. So what I've asked is that Mr. Moran attend many of these meetings as well as get the new director of IDOT here in Will County and help us answer those questions. Because as this project moves forward, those issues become more important to us, and therefore they should be taken up in that committee. And I want to encourage everyone to attend them because I think that those concerns should be answered. <coughs> And we are very much interested in answering those questions. Thank you so much. Howard? I recently uh, requested a meeting with uh, a couple of our elected officials uh, regarding these exact issues. Uh, what I was told is that uh, basically right now is that uh, all of the properties that were purchased, the, they're frozen at that tax rate of when they were purchased. So they won't increase in, in, in dollars and cents. Uh, they weren't quite clear yet on the actual airport, uh, the purchase of that as far as uh, if we're going to actually lose that for our local taxing bodies. And, and I'm in the school district that's uh, probably impacted the greatest, the uh, Beecher School District. And then I also asked this question though too, because basically we're getting caught in a, in a no man's land. Uh, we're in between. So that if there is going to be future development around a future airport, that uh, basically EAVs are going to increase, and our local taxes bodies live off EAVs. 
so that we, we shouldn't antagonize the situation and, and go on and on and on for years because basically uh, people pay their bills every every year. Uh, we pay our taxes every year so that, you know, we, we need to actually uh, get this resolved. And then I also express my concern because we have a lot of willing sellers out there right now that just, they want to be bought out. They, they, they don't want to deal with this anymore. They just want their property purchased or whatever and, and, and they, want to, they, they want to move on with their lives. So I mean, uh, I think that, you know, again, we have our ad hoc meeting or whatever, but I think as elected officials, as county board members, that our elected officials on the state level are open to us. They will sit down and meet with us and express your concerns in a face-to-face uh, -face type manner. Because a lot of it's speculation, a lot of it, we, we lose some truths along the way, but again, it's, you know, I, I want the answers. I want the answers for our, for our residents. And again, I don't want to be caught in this no man's land, you know, the same way with the Alien Expressway. Either you do it or you don't, you know, because we, we can't continue to go on and on and on. In the same way with the airport, and the, the majority of the people that I meet with, they have the same concern, either, you know, do it or, you know, or don't do it. You know, there's another expression for it, but I can't use it here. But, Anyway, uh, uh, I, I think that's something that we, you know, we need to look at. And, and again, you know, uh, Mr. Moses and uh, Ms. Ogala, they actually express these same concerns. And then, uh, you know, as, as Jim was saying, yes, we do need the answers, and, and I do agree with that. But again, I encourage our members here to meet with their elected officials. You know, that that's the easiest and the best way. It doesn't get convoluted. Uh, there isn't three different versions on the way down. So, and then that, that's my comment on it. So. Thank you, Bob. Um, I, I just wanted to speak on some of the things that Bob said, was that um, while there are some willing sellers out there because people are really tired of living in this um, airport situation, I think they're becoming willing sellers just in the sense that it's, it's our God's intention to take everybody's property via condemnation, regardless of the fact that they have an airport plan in place, approved by the FAA or anything. And um, so some people maybe you think are a willing seller, maybe some people just don't want to go through condemnation. Um, so don't don't misconstrue everything that, you, that, that might be said. I know that recently there was a, a report after the ad hoc committee, it was in the uh, Bugle, where Nick Ryer asked Susan Shea, you know, why why are you buying the land in the airport footprint before there's a record decision um, or any key three person act, uh, investment group actually selected and you're not doing that in the Ileana. And she said that was because the FAA requires us to um, make those purchases. Well, um, just this week in um, September 13th, Crane's article, the story was written by Paul Marion, and I'm going to have you guys get a copy of this for everybody. In this thing, uh, Paul Marion actually went to the FAA and, he said, and found out that they do not require the state to buy the land uh, before the airport is approved, but they want to try and make sure that they have the property so investors come. So let's sweeten the deal so the investors come. If, if it's a good plan, the investors are going to be there. I've been saying, since 2002, they've been buying land. If they've been buying land since 2002, and all the governors have pushed it forward, and county board has supported the uh, airports to a certain degree, here and there, whatever, mm -hmm. then I would think that's a pretty sweet deal. <coughs> Legislation is written very sweetly for these investors to come in and get their money back so that they, they aren't at a loss. So take the time to read this. I'm going to make sure that the copy is sent to each one of you. And, and, and everything is not exactly as I'd have proposed it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Moran. Before we put the cart before the horse, uh, like I said, we will have a report <coughs> on, on property tax issues and what the concerns are, what actually happens when IDOT takes possession of properties. And as far as uh, planning and, and that goes for our local area infrastructure will county there has been grant money that's being given to will county and to some of the local municipalities to help plan for what will happen around the airport that money's coming from idot so we'll, we can get a report on that too what its status is at the next meeting also thank you thank you okay moving forward uh executive committee mr brooks chairman 
Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Executive and ladies and gentlemen, once again. Number one, 14261, authorizing execution of environmental recycling and disposal service host agreement. And um, I think, has that been distributed to everyone? Uh, we have put, put it on the floor, put it on the floor. Oh, okay. I so move. Moved by Mr. Mr. Brooks, second by Mr. Grossi. Now, we have a number of speakers, so if the board wants to uh, open up uh, uh, for public comment, Mr. Motion Mayor, here for public comment. The move by Mr. Mayor, second by Mr. Howard. All in favor, six, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary. So we'll start back uh, again with um, Mr. Moran. If you would please come down. Second. <laughs> Mr. Executive. The County Solid Waste Management Plan is the blueprint for providing the development of the County Solid Waste Management System, which has been developed over the past 20 years. That plan has identified the preferred disposal options. It has identified a single county-owned landfill to handle and dispose of the waste generated within the county service area. The contractor selected to develop and operate that landfill, the Prairie View landfill, is waste management. The plan itself envisions as well the development of any necessary infrastructure within that solid waste management plan and provides for various criteria that need to be met in order for any additions or supplements to be made to that infrastructure. Uh, the waste transfer station, which is the subject of this host agreement, would be such infrastructure, as well as any other facilities. A plan provides that the single landfill, the Prairie View landfill, will be the sole landfill handling the county solid waste disposal needs. And with respect to transfer stations, it identifies that the county is not going to develop any transfer stations. We'll simply leave that to the private sector as needed. Within the Prairie View host agreement, that responsibility and that duty to evaluate and determine whether transfer stations should be part of the county's solid waste management network was placed upon Waste Management of Illinois. It's in that Prairie View host agreement. So it's part of the plan and part of the overall strategy for providing the county's solid waste management system. A transfer station, as many of you know, is a consolidation facility, a waste consolidation facility that is designed to provide more efficient and effective transport of waste to out-of-county or distant landfills when those landfills are not available to serve a county service area. Where you have an available landfill that is capable of handling the whatever waste generated within the service area, there generally would not be a need for a transfer station. Here, the system that's been put in place, the Prairie View landfill, was operated and began accepting waste in 2004. It's been effectively handling county waste since that time. The county system for managing the waste and disposing of the waste has been effective and the county's determined. There's no need for any other landfill in the county over the next 13 years. That is the 20 year period that the plan provided for the disposal capacity at Prairie View. The, land, the transfer station which has been proposed here is located in the village of Rockdale. It's located within a mile of two other operating transfer stations. So in addition to the fact that the Prairie View landfill is operating and well <coughs> capable of handling all the county's waste needs, there are already two transfer stations within shouting distance of this proposed facility. 
So the determination, the key question that, that we must look at and consider is, can this proposed transfer station fit within the county solid waste management system, and can it also be consistent with the county solid waste management plan? And based on the plan and how it identifies who ought to develop transfer stations and the infrastructure within the solid waste management system, it certainly does not appear that this facility could either fit this system or certainly not be consistent with the county solid waste management plan. Essential criteria for any review and consideration of such a proposal. So in looking at whether a host agreement ought to be entered into, certainly the threshold question needs to be, can this facility fit within the county system? Can it be consistent with the plan? And I think the, the, the clear indication and conclusion that we can reach from looking at the plain language of the plan and the Prairie View host agreement that is tied in and implemented as part of the plan is no. The answer is certainly not. Thank you. Any question? Yes? Ms. Wright, right there. Isn't it true that the waste management's current transfer station that's located in Rockdale, they actually, that transfer station transports waste to the landfill? Yes. But you just stated that it's, it's the close proximity, it, it's so close, so why have this new one, yet the one that's already there does, does the job already? The Rockdale transfer station that's operated by Waste Management was cited in 1994, which was shortly after the county first developed its first solid waste plan. But it was prior to the county's determination that a single county-owned, privately operated facility, the Prairie View facility, would be developed. So that basically what we were dealing with in that instance is an infrastructure or transfer stations that were basically in place at an earlier point from the date when Prairie View was identified as the single landfill and the single disposal facility for the county. In other words, Prairie View had been developed at the time Rockdale was, was established. So what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Well, no, certainly from the standpoint of the county's plan as it's evolved and the objectives that have been identified for the county in the plan, with the development of Prairie View, which was first permitted and commenced operation in 2004, and then to provide for that uh, disposal period of 20 years and to handle the county's waste needs over that period, uh, it came about after Rockdale was, was cited. And, and would you necessarily cite the Rockdale transfer station today after Prairie View was put in place? <coughs> it may not be, strictly speaking, necessary. But it was infrastructure, along with the other transfer stations existing in the county, that predated Prairie View. Any other, any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Okay, next uh, speaker uh, signed up was uh, Marty Shanahan. Mr. Shanahan. Black Road, Joliet. I represent the village of Rockdale, and the village of Rockdale president, uh, Samuel White, is also uh, present today. I just want to, uh, first, the first thing I want to say is I respectfully disagree with, with, uh, with uh, my colleague's uh, statement, essentially, that this board gave the authority to waste management on whether to site transfer stations. So that would essentially mean that this board gave to waste management, this is what he's, this is the summary of the comment, that environmental uh, recycling and disposal would have to go to waste management, a competitor, whether uh, they should operate or not. And I can tell you what that answer would be, it would certainly be no. I want to reaffirm today that the vote is not a vote for a transfer station. What Rockdale is asking is an opportunity to hold a hearing pursuant to state statute 
and whether environmental recycling and disposal meets the criteria as set forth in the state statute. And if, number one, environmental submits a site application to the village of Rockdale, number two, uh, environmental meets the statutory requirements after a hearing in the village of Rockdale, and three, Rockdale votes to allow it, four, the state approves it, and five, environmental constructs the transfer station, then if all that occurs, which you're voting on today, are the benefits for the county. Uh, there's just one more thing I want to mention is about the uh, solid waste plan itself, and this is just, you know, attorney statutory language. The, uh, the authority for the county to put together a solid waste plan comes out of the Solid Waste Planning and Recycling Act. And the act itself says as follows, this mandatory act of 1992 shall not be construed to impact the authority of local governments in the siting of solid waste disposal facilities. So I just want to make it clear that uh, Rockdale is a signing authority. The hearing all goes through Rockdale. If you read through all the statutes, <coughs> everything goes through the uh, village of Rockdale and the vote on the, uh, I'm going to call that a secondary host agreement. Uh, that would be if all those things occur, those are the benefits that the county will receive. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Shanahan? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks. Um, our next speaker signed up is uh, Jay Ipima. Jay? I'm just Okay, okay, thank you, Jay. Um, next we have, um, I think it's John Hock. Is that correct? Oh, oh okay, thank you, sir. Um, then um, the last one signed up is Mr. George Mueller. Lawyers never waive their opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> you want that on the record? <laughs> I'm George Mueller. I'm the attorney for Environmental Recycling and Disposal Systems. My office is at 609 Etna Road, Ottawa, Illinois. I am also a Will County resident living in southwestern Naperville. Environmental Recycling and Disposal Services is a local business having operated in Will County and Rockdale as a garbage uh, hauler for uh, over 15 years. They seek to develop and build a small transfer station, as Mr. Moran said, a consolidation facility in Rockdale. To do so, they need ultimately permission from the EPA, but initially local siting approval from the village of Rockdale, which has statutory jurisdiction over this process. Despite the fact that Rockdale has jurisdiction, we have engaged in painstaking, lengthy negotiations with Will County on a secondary host agreement, and we were pleased to finally get to a handshake agreement last week on the terms of that host agreement. Now, as Mr. Shanahan said, you're not here today to approve the transfer station. You're also not being asked to determine whether there's a need for the transfer station or whether the transfer station is consistent with the local solid waste management plan. Those are criteria that must be decided at the local siting hearing in front of the village of Rockdale, and both Will County and our competitor, Waste Management, have the opportunity to appear at that siting hearing and present their positions on the issues that Mr. Moran opined upon earlier. Now, Mr. Moran's interpretation of the solid waste management plan as delegating from the county to waste management the sole and exclusive authority to determine whether or not there can be other uh, pollution control facilities in the county is, I think, somewhat suspect given the fact that it's an interpretation by a competitor. Moreover, uh, the host agreement that we have negotiated 
actually contains a provision that in the event the transfer station is constructed, we must use our best efforts to direct all waste collected within the service area to the Prairie View landfill. And there are only limited exceptions under which that cannot occur. And I think that's an important point to remember. And in that sense, we believe we are consistent. Most importantly, the authors of the County Solid Waste Management Plan had the foresight in crafting the plan to put language in there that all of the requirements <coughs> regarding host agreements and the contents of host agreements can be waived at the county's option. You're the governing body of the county. You've got the ability to waive any of those requirements, requirements which we think we are consistent with in any event. But lastly, this isn't about consistency today. All our host agreement does as a secondary host agreement is to guarantee certain performance criteria on our part to the satisfaction of the county and to provide certain benefits to the county as well. And I might add, if this transfer station is approved, the benefit to the village of Rockdale is that environmental recycling and disposal will provide free garbage pickup and disposal for the residents of Rockdale for a period of 20 years. That's not an insubstantial benefit. Thank you for your kind attention. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, I have a question. Can you please tell us, you, you identified uh, that there were gonna be benefits to the county. Can you give me a few? The benefits to the county are that we have to maintain certain county standards in terms of uh, screening of the facility, in terms of uh, operation of the facility. Additionally, if we exceed a uh, threshold tonnage, we provide actual financial host fees to the county. The reason that we are not providing host fees from, ton from the first ton on is because we are providing free garbage pickup uh, for Rockdale for a 20 year period. Yes, sir. Follow up question. So what you're saying is as a business, you're going to come in and use taxpayer dollars to cover your uh, negotiations with Rockdale to provide free garbage. We've already concluded those negotiations with Rockdale. That no, that's not what I'm saying. Place. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the host fees because you're getting free host fees on the tonnage. The first, how many? I tons? believe it's 650 tons per day. I'm just asking the question that you got 650 tons that the county residents are going to be taken over and paying for. I don't know, it's not county residents, it's uh, haulers that pick up. Well, we're, we're losing, in, I guess we're losing income, is that what it is? Well, if that, uh, if that waste went out of county, you wouldn't get any host fees from it either. So it's not a matter of the county is losing income. There, that's income that doesn't yet exist, the county is getting secondary benefits. So, so you're also taking, well, there, there's a couple of questions that I'm just trying to clarify what's you know, just to make sure that I have all the facts straight here. So that when the dollars, you're not having to pay any dollars up front for a while, and then how much tonnage, do you have an idea of what the tonnage was that you do start paying most of these? 650 tons per day. What well, we are providing Rockdale with free, free garbage pickup and disposal, that. doing it right now, actually. And then, so how many tons are you getting from the Rockdale area at that point, just out of curiosity? I think we anticipate that we'll initially be uh, operating at 125 uh, tons per day. This is a local facility, not a regional facility. So, and I understand, so 125 tons a day free being picked up, but yet we have 650 tons that you're not paying host fees and you're taking up space in ours. I, I'm just a little curious. Well, we, we're, we're gonna pay to dispose of that waste at uh, Review. Yeah. So the county does get a uh, financial benefit. We're required to take the garbage that we transfer to Prairie View and then most of these get paid from there. But if you're not paying for them, then what was, so is there a payment then for that first 650, is that just free? It's, it's not free to us. We pick it up, we then have to dispose of it, and we pay to dispose at Prairie View, which, uh, then has to give host fees to the county on that tonnage. So the dollar, I'm just, I just want to, 
because I'm not quite sure the difference between host fees and you paying if you dump it. We're paying a tipping fee at Prairie View from which this Prairie View pays a host fee to the county. So then waste management pays that? Yes. So waste management pays us for you to take space in our garbage dump for the first 650000 Well, they're making a profit on us, too, because they're going to charge us a lot more than they're paying you. But if they charge you a lot more, then aren't you allowed to take it some other place? No, we're required to take the garbage to Prairie View, except for certain narrow limitations. Mr. Weigel. Uh, if Mr. George mentioned what I was going to say. Uh, we're, they're going to pay a, a fees at Prairie View, so the county will be getting fees for this tonnage. It's not something that, that's going away. No, the waste management pays. No, waste management doesn't pay it. Who pays, who pays the first, those fees for the 650? The, the recycling company. We pay the tipping fee at Prairie View, from which waste management pays a share to the county per their host fee. The hauler pays it. The hauler pays it. And what's the difference between that and the host fee? Maybe that's where my confusion is. A host fee is essentially can be thought of as a tax on disposal. A typical tipping fee when we dump at Prairie View might be thirty to forty dollars per ton. I believe the county's share of that. Uh, is going to be roughly uh, three to four dollars per ton. And, and don't quote me on the exact numbers, okay. but that's how it works. So, I guess uh, my uh, uh, Ms. Hart, oh, that's okay, Ms. Hart. Um, so I guess my question, so kind of, what, down, Susan. Kind of what, what Chuck was saying, so if you get, say, a deal on the outset, you know, in King County, and you are not going to tell me that if you got something that was that much cheaper that you wouldn't go and haul it into another county, into another dump? In other words, if there, well, there are no dumps in Kane County. Well, I just gave a friend county. Give me one. <laughs> I mean, the, you know, the, the closest viable competitor is probably Livingston Landfill down in Pontiac. And, and frankly, the uh, post agreement that you're asked to vote on today says that uh, in terms of competitive price, we have to look at the cost of transportation, too. And fuel is expensive. Our cost of transport to Livingston would be much higher than the cost of transport to Prairie View. And I might add that right now, as a local hauler, ERDS is, in fact, dropping waste both at the waste transfer station and direct hauling to Prairie View. Clearly, having our own transfer station increases our efficiencies and allows us to give a massive benefit to the village of Rockdale. But it doesn't cost the county any money, and in fact, guarantees a continuing revenue stream from that waste. Mr. Brooks. Mr. Executive, should not our attorney be at the podium answering our question? Well, he, 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 he's going to next time. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Mr. Grossi, did you have a question? Any other questions for Mr. Mute? No, Mr. Moran. I would say I have similar questions, but I'll wait for Chuck Helsman. Mr. Moran. Better person to ask. I'm, I'm just I'm trying to understand this business model where you pick up garbage for free and then you pay somebody to dispose of it. You make money then on the recyclables that come out of that garbage or how does it how does that work? <laughs> Well, obviously, we get paid on other tonnage that we pick up outside of Rockdale. And, that, and then, uh, I guess my next question is, what are those special exceptions that you would be able to take the garbage out? Because I'm not, this con I'm, I'm concerned about the tipping fees, but I'm also concerned about if hundreds of tons of garbage per day leave Will County, that we're not using that garbage to create methane that goes into our cogenant plant that helps us pay some of the expenses around here, like our employees' health care benefits and that. So could you explain that to me? What's, what are those exemptions? What are, what are the exceptions? What does it take for you to qualify that to take the garbage somewhere else? The draft document agreed upon between county staff and ERDS provides that ERDS must use its best efforts to dispose of waste from the service area at the Prairie View landfill. The only exception is if there are operational problems at Prairie View, 
that uh, render the, that operation below industry standards, and or if the total cost of disposal at Prairie View, including transportation expense, exceeds the total cost from another willing and able competitor in the surrounding area. As I said, the closest is probably Livingston. The agreement also provides an arbitration provision in the event that the county does not agree with uh, our actions and they are they have the ability to call us to task on it. Thank you. Mr. Howard. Could uh, we hear from our attorney when? Well, he is. He's going. He's going to be here. My, Mr. Mueller is uh, at the podium right now to ask questions of Mr. Mueller. Suzanne, did you have another question? Did you raise your hand? Oh, Ms. Bartek. Thank you. Isn't it true that your DS they uh, not only collect from Rockdale, they do collect from? Other businesses in Will County, correct? Yeah, I mean, ERDS has uh, a, a business that extends countywide, and uh, that's how the business model is uh, profitable. We get paid on waste except that collected in Rockdale. So there will be more than, like you said, 120 tons coming from elsewhere within the county. Correct. Thanks. Any other questions for Mr. Mueller? Mr. Ballage. I just want to clarify something in my mind. When uh, you're talking Hold about... Hold on, Mr. Valley. Please. You're talking about delivering garbage to various landfills or whatever. If you uh, have one truck, you can go to uh, Prairie View, say, five times in a day, but you can only go to Pontiac maybe more, twice because of the time difference. So you have to have more equipment, so your cost would vastly increased by uh, taking anywhere else besides Prairie View. Is that kind of what I'm getting? I would agree completely with that analysis, sir. Any last questions for Mr. Mueller? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mueller. Thank you. Mr. Nelson.
the ERDS proposal meets the nine statutory siting criteria. As someone said of my distinguished counterparts here, this is not an endorsement of the ERDS transfer station. This is not an approval of the ERDS transfer station by the county. Mr. Moran, on behalf of Waste Management, for one competitor, and Mr. Mueller, on behalf of ERDS, for another competitor, will duke it out. It's not, and they, I have been with them for the better part of 30 years on each side, all the way to the Illinois Supreme Court. So I stand confident that they will duke it out. It's not our job to duke it out. Oh, okay. It is not our job to duke it out. We are placed, you administer the plan, okay? You have a partner, admittedly, at the at the Prairie View Landfill, which is waste management. You have a good partner there that has lived up to the benefit of its bargain and has operated that landfill the way it should. But they don't dictate the plan. They don't promulgate the plan. The Solid Waste Planning Recycling Act does not say counties in the state of Illinois and their private counterparts or partners shall promulgate the plan. It says the county shall promulgate the plan. The county shall enforce the plan. So what we are confronted here with is trying to balance everybody's legitimate interest. That's our job here. The county's job here, if I can refer to my notes that I took when I was listening to, to my distinguished colleagues, there is a necessary at some point, there's a necessary divergence in interest between our interest in waste management in the Prairie View landfill and other facilities that are proposed for other parts of the county. Okay, And as Mr. Moran even conceded, because he's a good and honorable man and an esteemed colleague of mine, a good friend, he pointed out the, waste, the solid waste plan says the county leaves the development of transfer stations and network to the private sector. The private sector, okay? Not, not one entity, not one entity, but the private sector. Okay, here's what we were confronted with by way of history, and this may an answer a lot of questions. Here's what we were confronted with. We were confronted in May of this year, or April of this year, with a request from Rockdale to meet with us. They said, we, we, are, we have negotiated a host agreement with the ERDS. We're not saying we're going to grant them site location approval. We're going to go through that process. But if they get site location approval, they will provide us with free disposal for 20 years, a significant monetary benefit over 20 years. Okay? We see in the plan that there's a requirement for secondary host agreements. Will you waive them? We said, no, no, we won't waive them because there are a lot of elements in missing from your primary host agreement that are in our plan that need to be addressed. So we will not waive that, okay? But at the same time, we're trying to balance the interest here of Rockdale, who are citizens of Will County, okay? of everyone else involved, including the various branches of county. So we're doing a del delicate balancing act here. Going to Mr. Mr. Mayor, going to, to your comment, do we, lose, do we lose money? No, we have a host agreement schedule that kicks in, but it takes at a certain point, as Mr. Mueller said, it's actually 601. It's actually at 601 tons if ERDS provides Waste dis free waste disposal to Rockdale. The reason it kicks in at 600 is there is a cost, as one of these other distinguished members of your county board said, there is a cost to providing free waste service. They need that relief from a host fee from us for the, and I'm gonna get very transparent here. We thought it was 400 tons. Okay, or 350. They push back at 700. Then we go back and forth, back and forth. 
We had a compromise of 600. Now I'm going to tell you why we had a compromise of 600, because I got them to agree to the preferred disposal facility provision, a contractual commitment to take the waste to Prairie View for so long as the host, uh, so long as the per ton fee there was equal to or less than any other landfill. Are there ways possibly absent a contract that we could have we could have forced them to do it? I'm not sure, but that involves litigation, and that involves protracted litigation, and that involves questions that haven't been answered by Mr. Mueller, Mr. Moran, and myself after 30 years of practicing all the way to the Illinois Supreme Court on those issues, okay? You know what I prefer? It's the same thing your bank prefers when you go in and get a loan. What do they make you sign? A contract. When you do work for someone and they're going to pay you, what do they what do they require? A contract, and vice versa, and conversely, a contract. So rather than leave this, the collective thought of the state's attorney's office. Again, I'm being very transparent. Of the state's attorney's office of all the waste. Uh, the land use department of all the other departments is if we don't have a contract if we don't have a contract how are we going to enforce these other all of these other things that they that ERDS is willing to give us by signing their name to it that we can take into court and enforce the easy way is always I think have a contract with a signature on it that you can enforce against someone someone else. Mr. Mayor, I, I divert, I digress from your point. The host fee, in the secondary host fee, generally for counties, I negotiated the last one in Lake County on the other side for group, okay? That's the most recent one, okay? The layers, the tiers there because group wasn't providing free disposal service to Round Lake Park. The, Tiers were 45 cents a ton, okay, for zero to 600 tons, and above that, 55 cents a ton, okay. Here we gave relief from zero to 600 only from what would have been 45 or 55 cents, as somebody pointed out in here. I call it the real action. The real action is the host fee that you get when this waste is taken to Prairie View. That's close to $4 a ton. That's the war. The battle is the secondary host fee of 45 cents or 55 cents. That's simply the battle. The war is, and I'm, I'm, I'm laying it all out on the table for our, for our adversaries here, our, my thought process. The, the battle is the 45 cents, okay? Uh, a couple hundred tons a day, what is that? A couple hundred bucks. The war is getting the close to four bucks a ton, which they pay if they are compelled, which the contract says under, under all but limited circumstances to take it to Prairie View, they pay a host, they pay a tipping fee, in other words, to dump it or tip it, which includes close to a $4 that includes, it's what's rolled into there is the $4 fee, close to 385, 387, whatever it is, that waste management must pay us on each ton that goes in there. So ERDS is rolling that into what they pay to waste management. Waste management pulls that out and puts it in the coffer, the host fee coffer that has to pay, that has to pay the, the county. But the key here we thought was Get a, get a contract which addresses our concerns, which are you going to direct it to Prairie View? Okay. Um, how about all the health, safety, and welfare issues? Okay. Those type of things. We wanted a contractual commitment for those kind of things. Now, the, the key provisions other than the preferred disposal, and again, as Mr. Mueller had said, their opt out of sending it to Prairie View is either Prairie View is, is violating regulations or statutes in its operation. I can assure you that's not going to happen. I've told you in June, it's a superlative operation by Mr. Hookstra. That's not going to happen, okay, it, at a place, at, at that facility, you know. Uh, it, it's not going to happen. So the other one is 
they have to demonstrate that there is a that the per ton disposal cost, which includes all fees, surcharges, and transport costs. And transport costs are the biggest nut. That's the biggest, that's the biggest nut. They have to demonstrate that they are equal to or they have to point out that they're less than at some other facility. Okay? They are going to the marketplace dynamic, like the old Adam Smith, the invisible hand. They are going to take the waste to Prairie View, as one of these other gentlemen said, as long as that's the cheapest place. But but absent the contract, what did we have to compel them? Now we can now we can compel them. The other important part is we reserve the right to participate in the siting hearing and provide comment. And we don't know. We can't, we haven't seen an application. We don't know what the application is going to say. So it could be the county goes there and says, no, we don't like this. You know, in our, in our role, we don't, we don't like this. Let's let Chuck finish it up and um, hold your questions until we get I'll just, I'll just conclude and take, I'll conclude and take the questions with this comment. Um, I, I've heard negative comments from both sides, um, waste management about, boy, we wish we would've got a deal this good. Yeah, you know, and then I hear Mr. Mueller and the item was saying, this is really hard for us to swallow. You really jammed us, which takes me back to my good friend, Judge Stanley Ruskowski, an esteemed federal judge in Rockford, Illinois, very close friend of mine, that just named, that passed away recently, God rest his soul, they named the new courthouse after. After a protracted Superfund settlement negotiation that I was in, in the hallway, up by the water cooler, he follows me out. I went to the water cooler, and he says, Chuck, come here. I said, yes, yeah, Judge. He says, is anybody happy <laughs> among the 25 parties? And I said, H, no. And it wasn't heck no, Pastor. <laughs> it wasn't, I said, H, no, because he was my friend. He goes, thank God. He says, then it must be equitable. Because if somebody was if somebody was happy, then I erred in favor of somebody, and it's a lopsided settlement. Same thing with this contract. This is what we think the state's attorney's office, the land use department, and other branches of government, a good agreement. It does not endorse this proposal. They have to bring their siting application. We will review the siting application and comment on it as necessary. Mr. Frizzle. So it seems to me we compel them to do something that they would do anyway. Because why would they go somewhere else if it was more expensive? Well, we, this assumes this assumes that they don't give right now, I think, the cheapest place is Prairie View. But that's not a given. This is a the, your question's a good one. The waste disposal business is very fluid and very dynamic. Just like any commodity business, just like any brokerage, they broker waste disposal prices, just like they broker metals, they broker any type of commodity. It's very dynamic, it changes day to day, so it's very fluid. Today, Prairie View may, from the natural market force point of view, be the place for them to take it. Tomorrow, they may say, no, we want to, for one reason or another, we, we may want to take it somewhere else. That's why we wanted the contractual provision compelling them to take it. But I thought we'd given them the out if they, their costs yes. were a better deal. Yeah, you know why? Because if we don't do an agreement with them, they can do that anyway. I mean, we haven't really compelled them to do anything that they wouldn't do. They would go to the cheapest place, right, <coughs> do right now, unless it's cheaper to go somewhere else, and they can do that if they, can, they can. They can do it. So what if we really compel them to do? To go to Prairie View, if they're cheaper, we're forcing them to go there, which they would go there anyway. That's correct. But and to do that, we lost $16,000 a year in house fees. They're, again, they're, if we don't have a, the other the important part of the contract here is not so much host fees, uh, not so much the, the host fees, the secondary host fees, it's the environmental protections. It's the things we want in an agreement that we're not sure if we make those recommendations to Rockdale Society and Authority, we can't compel them to accept special conditions. That's why we want a contract. It's more than just 
$16,000, sir. It's environmental protections, and I don't know how you put a price tag on those. Mr. Mayor. Charleston, I appreciate your uh, openness in, in all this. And um, as an elected official, it's our job to ask these kind of questions. Sure. To protect the interests of our taxpayers. These are good questions. And without asking these questions, we can't make sure that we have an open decision process along with making decisions based on information and not just based <coughs> on uh, take our word for it. You should never take the word of anybody. So, I, and what I do appreciate is that you've been directed and asking this, and, and uh, I think you've done a really good job as our lawyer. You give me a better understanding of what this host agreement is and, and where our dollars may or may not come from. I, I think um, it may have sounded like I was not going to support this host agreement. I never said that. And in fact, I think that I would like to see this host agreement go forward at this particular point with the way, because of the kind of things that you've just laid out here for us, that we are protecting the environment of the county, that you know this was the negotiations, that uh, there are dollars, they're not getting free dumping, that the host fees are an additional tax. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of inclined to take this to, get, let this go to the next level just because um, we need to move it on. Mr. Okay. Thank you. When I left Amico BP after 30 years and came to work in local government, I never thought I would have the opportunity to call on my antitrust law background again. Yet here I am. <laughs> and I want to, um, and I hope everyone appreciates the irony of someone who worked for one of the largest corporations in the world, speaking to you this morning on behalf of a small entity, and I am. What we're really talking about here is whether or not a smaller enterprise, ERDS, should have the opportunity to go forward and make its pitch um, and site this facility in Rockdale. And what we're what their competitor is really afraid of is that they're going to be successful and that they're going to get business and take business away from other um, people who have waste in Will County. Let's, let's call it what it really is here. And I don't, I want to speak up on behalf of this organization and say we don't need to be in that business of trying to regulate the playing field for these two parties. This, in this country, in this state, let them duke it out in the marketplace. We don't need to uh, make some rules or being used as a um, tool by one party or the other, and that's what we're being asked to do here today. And I don't think we need to be in that business. Let the marketplace, which as our own lawyer says, is fluid and dynamic, let the marketplace determine who's going to be successful in getting um, Will County businesses to use their services. Let's get out of that business ourselves. We're going to collect our fee as the um, host of the landfill, and um, we'll collect it one way or the other. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Mustis? Uh, you know, there is, in my view, a number of aspects to this. And this is just perhaps a small portion of what we're really addressing, our need to address. And I, I agree with uh, Ms. McDermott that, that you know, there is this private sector side that's a competitive side. We're really, well, we don't really uh, try to tip that scale one way or the other. And, and certainly it's not my, not my concern. Private sector folks should compete in the private sector. But my concern from the very beginning has been the Will County Solid Waste Plan and how uh, these types of facilities potentially affect our solid waste plan. Uh, we, in this host agreement, there are a number of, uh, a, a couple of the criteria within our solid waste plan that do get addressed. The majority of them do not get addressed. By design. By design. design. I agree. By design. <clears throat> this is not only, I'm not really asking a question, yeah. I guess I'm going to lay it. I'm going to lay out where I think we, we should go here. The next step is the siting process. <clears throat> and certainly, that's where 
this county, and everybody should understand, by, by agreeing on the host agreement doesn't mean that we don't address other issues within our host agreement. Doesn't mean that even we might even oppose if certain conditions aren't met within our solid waste plan. Not that we would, I'm just saying we could. Uh, and, and, and it could also mean that in the siting process that, that, that Rockdale and the, and, and the applicant would agree to meet the criteria of our solid waste plan, is what we really want. I mean, that's, that's what's the most important part of this process, is that our solid waste plan, that the integrity of our solid waste plan stays intact. So I don't know, Mr. Halston, if you want to comment on that, but I, I, I agree with Mr. Uh, Mayor that we, you know, we should move this on and get to what I think is going to be the more important aspect of the process, and that's the siting area. Yep, I, I agree with your comments. Um, we deliberately left open and uncommitted a number of variables in the plan because we don't know if need can be proven, as Mr. Moran said. You know, I, go, I agree with everybody that talked here in one respect or another. I have to try to be balanced, okay? I don't know if they'll meet other criteria. We can't tell that. We reserved, if you look at the host agreement, we specifically reserved the right to raise all those, all those issues. And going to this gentleman's comment about we contracted with them to do more, no more, no less than, than they could do now anyway, sometimes in the marketplace, for one reason or another, due to falling out, Okay, and it doesn't, I'll grant you, it doesn't last long, but sometimes out of spite, or if you have another collateral agreement, okay, or a set off agreement, you know, or a swap agreement that's not related directly to your host fee, there's an incentive to take the waste somewhere else because there are collateral side agreements, okay? This focuses, this says, no, no, if, it, we're focusing on the per ton cost here, not side agreement, not your not your side deals, you know, your your side deals and and all that. So this does compel them to take it to Prairie View as long as it's called the site specific host fee at Prairie View is equal to or lower than any place else, taking into consideration all fees, tipping, host, everything else, and transport fees. Okay. It eliminates that possibility that they, either out of spite or by some other suitor, they say, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll horse trade with you on know, other deals at other, at other places if you take it, you know, somewhere other than Prairie View. That's what it's intended to, uh, to prevent. Mr. 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 Are you? Oh, yes, I, yes, oh, I, 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 oh one, one other thing, Mr. Pastor, before. The other thing this does is if if on the host fee, on the secondary host fee, not a prairie view, but when they the host fee of this transfer station, if they were to get siting, if they were to get permitting, and if they wouldn't provide Rockdale um, free disposal, then the tipping fees going to Mr. Mayor's um, uh, questions, the tipping fees are fifty-five cents a ton for zero to six hundred and seventy-five cents a ton. Over, over 600, which is much, much higher than the host fees and any other what I call straight secondary host agreement in the state of Illinois. So it's, that, that was one of the RDS's concern. Wait a minute, this is much higher than what, what you agreed to in Lake, at, 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 in Lake County. It, doing an, an agreement also sets a precedent and a, for other transfer stations that may want to come in in other portions of the of the county. That was like that was what Lake County said when they negotiated with group that yeah, we didn't like everything there. We walked out a couple of times over two years and, and there was a two year hiatus before we came back to Lake County and negotiated. But once we did a host agreement, the position of Lake County is this becomes the model host agreement. If anyone else wants a transfer station in our county, we're going. To, nobody's going to say that we played favorites. We're going to lay this in front of them and say, "Here it is. Sign it. 
or don't sign? Mr. Mr. Howard. Exactly. We've heard a lot of good information. May I? Uh, Mr. Howard and Mr. Moran, then we'll go to uh, you the question. I'll call the question. Thank you. Mr. Howard. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Dr. Thank you. But before the uh, attorney bill on this approaches the national debt, uh, why don't we call for the question here? <laughs> Mr. Moran, you had one quick last comment? No? Okay, Mr. Mr. Brooks, back to Mr. Brooks. I'll, thank you, Mr. Helson, for all your information. Uh, uh, thank, you. thank you all, thank you all. Now, have we already, we've got a motion on the floor. We've got a motion and a second. And a second. Yeah, so, uh, a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Grossi? Yes. yes. Eustis? Yes. Howard? Yes. O'Gala? Yes. Izzo? Yes. Moran? No. Rice? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainier? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Yes. Was that Weigel or Weigel, you said? Bible. Mr. I said Bible. Bible. So, okay. Bible. Bible. Yes. Okay. Yes? Yes. Okay. Frytan? Yes. Okay. yes. Gould? Yes. Balich? Yes. Rizalone? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Adamick? Yes. Babich? Yes. Wilhelmy? Hart? Yes. Mayor? Yes. McDermott? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Collins? Berry? Yes. And Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Declare the sheriff's seat vehicle surplus and authorize it. The poll is on. I so move. Previous roll call. Mr. Brooks makes a motion to approve 14262, seconded by Mr. Adamick. Is there any questions? Previous roll call by Mr. Gould, seconded Second. by Ms. Trenier. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Very, the aye. one no, Mr. Aye. Moran, would you like to be a yes on this? Yes. Thank you very Thank much. You. Mr. Brooks. Number four, 14-264, awarding bid for tire collection, event, and I so move. Is that a good one? 14-263, it's almost dinner time now. 14-263, authorize the county executive to execute lease agreement for Pitney Bowles Mail Management System, and I so move. Second by Mr. Brooks, second by Mr. Perry. Uh, Previous roll call by Mr. Adamick, second by Mr. Babbage. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion is carried. Now, 14-264. Awarded bid for tire collecting event, I so move. Moved by Mr. Brooks, second by Mr. Howard. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Trenier, second by Ms. McDermott. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion carried. Number five, 14-265. Replacement hire for land use department, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Brooks, second by Ms. Rice. Any questions? Mr. Ballage. No, we just uh, had a budget presentation, and uh, we increased the amount of money we need, so I think it's uh, not prudent to be talking about doing any hires until after the uh, budget process. Um, we kind of discussed it in caucus, but you know I don't feel it's for the proper time we should wait. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other, Mr. Adamick? It's, it's my understanding there's already a commitment put forward, and for us to go backwards at this point would not be right for the person that we're trying to hire. Mr. Moran. As I understand it, we, we had a commercial planner. We lost that commercial planner. Uh, this is a replacement for that person. Uh, there's a, without this person, some, some permitting processes that go to our industrial plants and, and uh, in the area that are already difficult to keep in this area to do business with because they'd rather go somewhere where there's less government regulation at uh, instead of a process being approved for permitting for them to do any kind of work in their plant taking 24 to 48 hours it could stretch that into a period of weeks if it goes up to a third party planner uh, and i'm in favor of, of moving this forward and hiring personnel any other comments any other comments madam clerk call the roll 
Rosie? Eustis? Yes. Howard? Yes. Ogala? Yes. Isso? Yes. Moran? Yes. Rice? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainier? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Bible? Yes. Brightan? Yes. Gould? Yes. Balch? No. Prismo? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Yeah. Adamic? Yes. Babbage? Yes. Hart? Yes. Mayor? Yes. McDermott? Yes. Weibo? Yes. Barry? Yes. And Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Twenty-two affirmative, one negative. Twenty-two affirmative, one negative. A motion has carried. Mr. Brooks. And finally, fourteen dash two six six, Brinkman High, on Sunny Hill Nursing Home, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Brooks, second by Mr. Rice. And in questions, Previous, Previous roll call by Mr. Babbage, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion has carried. Yes. Uh, the Mr. next man, would you yes. like to be yes? Thank you. Right. Yeah, go ahead. The next meeting will be the morning of Take Back the Night with Joliet, October the 2nd, 9.30 a.m. in the other room across the hall. You have the appointments from County Executive on your desk, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Brooks, second by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Ferry, second by Ms. Hart. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Very Sustained. Sustained. Uh, Motion has carried. Announcement by the County Board Speaker, Mr. Brooks. Thank you this morning for all the proclamations. I know they touch the lives and not only everybody in this room, all across the whole county. Mr. Executive, I look forward to working with you for the 2015 budget. Thank you so much. I legislate while I'm working with you. I will be attending those workshops. Thank you, Ms. Howard, for all the work you have done. All of our staff, God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. The Democratic Caucus Chair, Mr. Brooks. He had to go. He had to go. Republican Caucus Chair, Mr. Mewson. Now, you'd think I'd be quick to do this so long. Yes, we would. Ah, you're wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Executive, I'm going to be quick. Thank you. Thank you.
and which they weren't happy to do. So uh, I, I, I do call everyone, and, and as some of us baby boomers, I'm, just, I'm not going to use seniors anymore. I'm not going to. I'm a boomer, baby. <laughs> that, doesn't that sound like young? I'm a boomer, you know. And us boomers who are probably entering, entering our, our work career, I personally look to doing additional civic duty when I uh, uh, give up all other activities. That's where I'm going to spend the rest of my days uh, because it can be very satisfying and if we let our young people know, uh, and they may not say young people, young people. I look at, like Reagan. Hey, Reagan, <laughs> you're a young person. Hey, I grandkids almost are. <laughs> I call it a, a little bit younger, but not much younger. So, so even you 30-somethings, you know, uh, you're, you're part of the young people. So don't, don't forget about civic duty, because I do think it's important that we start talking to our younger, our grandkids, our children about uh, a civic uh, like a civic debt. I like to actually put a civic debt that we all owe. So, uh, and let's see, do I have anything else you want to talk about? <laughs> Outside of, well, we're coming to the baseball. I will say this for the Cub fans. You, you may have an exciting future to look at. I don't know about science fans. That's right, baby. Uh, but here's what I really know. We got the, 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 the Bears, not everybody loves the Bears, but not you right around the corner. I'm just saying about that. And uh, I, you know what? I'm going to keep this here until after one. Are you going to the record? Oh, you're going to the record. I remember years ago. I'm going to tell you a little story. Oh, no. Years ago, Dick and Paul, the county board member, we, were, we went through a longer meeting, and he finally said, hey, us farmers go to lunch. <laughs> but at any rate, no. Everyone, thanks again for all your work. Have a great day. And uh, looking forward to uh, next month's work. Right. Seeing, seeing nothing more to come before the <laughs> county board, we, uh, we, will, uh, we will stand at recess until Thursday, October 16, 2014, at 9.30 a.m. Everyone have a great day.